From roads, bridges, subways, you name it, all the infrastructure China has built over the past decade is bigger than anything the world has ever seen before. That activity has been a big driver of China's very fast economic growth in the last decade. The companies which borrowed money to finance these developments are called LGFVs, or Local Government Financing Vehicles. And what happens to them next will help determine the future of China's entire economy. LGFVs borrow money from banks, or they sell bonds. In total, the amount they owe is about equal to half of China's GDP. LGFVs have been really good at transforming China's urban environment, but they've not been very good at making money. And that's because a lot of the infrastructure they build is either free or very cheap for the public to use. So they'll probably never be able to pay back all the debt they borrowed to do that building. But that's actually okay. To understand why, remember that the debt is part of the wealth of Chinese banks. They're happy as long as the LGFVs are giving them a steady income stream by paying their interest. And the LGFVs have been able to keep paying their interest thanks to help from their local government owners. A growing economy means more government income, which they hand over to the LGFVs to help them pay their interest. When the time comes for them to pay the principal on their debt, the banks have been happy to say, don't worry, you can pay us later. This has all worked pretty well. LGFVs have always been able to meet payments due on their bonds. But a few years back, China's leaders in Beijing started worrying that LGFVs are wasting resources that could be used better elsewhere, in China's new high-tech sectors, for example. So it sent a message to local governments, stop promising to support your LGFVs if they get into trouble and see if they can support themselves. But because local governments had stopped promising to be a backstop, the banks started thinking, maybe we won't roll over the debt like we did before and if we do, we'll demand a higher interest rate. The problem is that LGFVs in poorer areas of China are never going to be able to support themselves. And at the same time, because of an end of a boom in apartment sales, China's local governments have seen their income slowing dramatically. And that means that they have less money to hand over to the LGFVs that they own. That could mean LGFVs fail to pay interest on their bonds, suddenly making those bonds a lot less valuable. And banks, would become less wealthy than they thought that they were. Now, we can all remember from the 2008 financial crisis what happens when banks lose their wealth. It can be a huge shock to the financial system. In the worst case, they can stop lending entirely, crushing the economy. Now, obviously, China's leaders sitting in Beijing don't want that to happen. But they also don't want to just bail out all of these companies. They think that that would send the wrong message about wasteful borrowing local governments are going to have to keep doing everything they can to ensure their LGFVs carry on making their payments. But if Beijing isn't going to bail them out, then local governments will need to cut down spending on other areas, including on infrastructure, to make sure that the bond payments are made. So what does all of this really mean? Remember that infrastructure boom over the last decade? We won't see it repeated ahead, and that means China will grow more slowly over the next decade.